Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I would like to thank all of you for the invitation to be here to share what we, what we studied. So I'm going to talk in here, but also I'm going to be listening. Okay, there is no teacher here. We're going to, even by the way, I'd like to have some participation. There are some points that we're going to do some reflection together so we can enjoy this reflection, this learning together. Also, thank you for the Lord, for Jesus to, to help us, to guide us for our reflection tonight. When we thought about to study about Jesus, it's interesting because it's very difficult and at the same time, it's easy. The difficulty is as much as trying to understand a spirit that is such a, a high level of experience and love, his capability. You feel like a, a little ant trying to understand a human being thinking. On the flip side, it's easy when you get into his message. He was so, he simplifies the nature laws. He simplifies the way for us to achieve the happiness. We love you. <laughs> Welcome. And, and we were balancing on both sides. So we're going to try to navigate it and try to see both sides that we're talking here. And uh, on the question, here we go. On the Spirit's book, you know, for those that uh, brand new, you know, first time, was when Alain Kardec did the, the, the collection of questions and answers, and he codified and put together on this book, the Spirit's book. And one of those questions, 625, he asked to the spirit realm, what is the most perfect type that God has offered to the man as his guide and model? And the answer is Jesus. And that's why we're going to guide our lectures towards looking at him as our, our master. How can I learn? How we can model ourselves, our attitudes towards Him? Here we go. On the book, On the Way to the Light, um, by Francisco Cândido Xavier, you know, by the Spirit Emmanuel. Right in the beginning of the book, he, uh, Emmanuel describes a little bit about the genesis of the planet and talk a little bit about also Jesus. And it started this way. Put this way. Maybe it's too far away. The transition of the spirit world says that in the governance of the all phenomena of our system, there is a community of pure spirits chosen by the Supreme Lord of the universe who hands hold the guiding reins of the life of all planetary collectivities. For, that, for what we have been told, that's this Emmanuel you know, telling us. This community made up of perfect angelic beings of which Jesus is one of the divine members, has met in the vicinity of the earth only twice in the course of the kingdom millennium, the known millennium to decide urgent issues pertaining to the organization and the directions of our planet. 
twice. That's something. We're going to start to look at, I shouldn't say the size, but the importance of this spirit. The first meeting, the first time that Jesus came close to the, you know, to the orb, took place when the terrestrial orb detached from solar nebula, so that the demarcation of our cosmo help help me that Belasad is going to help me to to read that one. Very good, Bella. System and the prototypes of the life in the fiery uh, matter of the planet could be set in space and time. So that was an affirmation of the planet. Now let's look at this picture. Oops. Here we go. One more. Here we go. Now let's let's go back. Many, many, many millions years ago, as we were watching the matter, this raw material that came out of the sun to build our planet. And Jesus was the one that was responsible to build this planet. That's the sun. Emmanuel mentioned part of the same book that we're talking about about the divine sculpture that was Jesus. Yes, he had overcome all the terrors of the force that had been unlashed on this unleashed. All this combining matter, it took some time to really cool down and start to form the planet with his legion of divine workers now we know Jesus he works as a team he doesn't work alone everything that we're talking about has a meaning behind that and we're trying to remove that meaning and bring it to us the importance of working together and he's our master in a very important mission, created a planet. He didn't do alone. He put the chisel of his mercy to the block of unshaped matter, which is the wisdom of the Father had dislocated from the sun for his august and passionate hands. He was in charge with his team. He shaped the geological sculpture of the earth, earthly herb, or orb, chiseling out of the blast and the grand school. He shaped our school. Let's feel how much work him and other workers put together for us. <clears throat> Where his heart would be expanded in love, light, and justice. With his armies of developed workers, devoted workers, he established the rules of Earth's 
physical phenomena setting their future stable st stability on the foundation of the simple bodies of matter. And Emmanuel continues talking about that he organized the scenario of life created under God's eyes what was essential for the lives of the being to come. He made the atmospheric pressure sustainable for human beings in anticipation of their birth of the course of the millennia. Now, let's move millions and millions of years forward and let's watch a small video. Imagine the size of the sun, the energy, the complexity. Way back when, when this raw material was removed from the sun. We don't have anything to show that it was not, you know, Jesus not say they created Mercury, but part of this pure spirit team, those created those planets. Just for us to look at this planet from different perspective, the complexity to build a planet. That's Venus. now our planet imagine the spirit that was in charge to build our planet the beauty the level of complexity
can we feel the level of complexity? That's the part that was very hard to understand Jesus. His capacity. Someone that put a team together to build our planet. Sometimes we, which is also very important, we look at Jesus more for the moral aspect. Right? But it's, it's much more than that. We don't see the other side. So we're talking about different, other different uh, fields, the science, the mathematics, the physics, biologists. He must be good and perfect in all these areas to be able to put this planet together. That gets complicated to really understand. Jesus. And we'd like to open a little bit for a reflection what we have seen at this point. I'm opening it up. <laughs> if someone want to say something, if something that touch your heart, that you want to share with all of us. We're learning together here, okay? One at a time, okay? <laughs> Bella, you have a... <laughs> Bella, come on. Get us started. <laughs> Get us started. Anything touches you or... All that? That's very <laughs> interesting. Uh, how would you like to say, Please. according to my deficient vision, that uh, this place is so enlightened, uh, the presence of uh, so high spirit in here, and uh, they bring the memory of Jesus Christ is here, very visible, and also uh, the benefactor, Sister Gervasi Maria. Very good. Imagine. I'm going to bring some, some points here. The planning. For us to plan uh, our next day. It's kind of complicated, right? Just one day. What about for the month? For the year? Five years? Ten years? He planned millions of millions of years ahead. He understands so much of the nature laws that takes in consideration the timing. It's not about to be magic. No, respecting the timing. No, what comes first for the cycle. It's important for us also to bring it in our heart for our inner transformation. To be patient with yourself too, with ourselves, requires time. Talking about uh, his love. How much of his time dedicated to build our school? A place that will be perfect for us to learn, to evolve. We see some, just some pictures that the beauty, even when we walk around, we can see the beauty, details, the variety of culture. So you have a variety of spirit that could come here in each scenario. You would learn more. His knowledge in all aspect. As I was thinking about him, it's more. It could, in the same time, I was so happy to have someone guiding us. The fear, sometimes the anxiety for things that will come, 
You start to dissipate it. And we know that one day, that we're going to be, all of us, going to be in charge to build a planet. Now our love for God is even higher. There are much more that sometimes we look so close and there's huge other things out there. And as we expand our vision, our feeling, those things get smaller and smaller. We put in perspective at the challenge that we call. So that was our first, for his first meeting here, we just reflect a little bit on that piece. Now, the second time occurred when the Lord came to the earth. Was determined in your determined, determined in order to bring the immortal lesson of his gospel of love and redemption to the human family. Okay, he built the planet. And then he said, okay, I will go there to teach you. Leave you some lessons so you can guide us, or guide me to be happy. And he came in on a time that was very difficult. But we're going to reflect more in the next steps. We select three passages. There is a, a millions out there, but we select the three. And uh, one of them, I asked the girl, say, we went to one book that the Boa Nova, and said, Daddy, uh, Daddy has, uh, there are many, many different uh, ideas here or, or events that it could bring it for us to learn from Jesus. And uh, I couldn't select one. So what I did is, we cut a small piece of a paper. We put some numbers there. We pray and ask the girls to pick. Okay, pick three. <laughs> and now we're going to pick one because maybe we won't be able to explain all of them here. And they select one, so that's why we're going to present one of them here. And the other two, we, we select. The first one for us to think now we see how big he is, what he has done. First one, Jesus' birth. There is a message there. That he couldn't come in a palace. He could come in the most comfortable place, on the safest place. Couldn't he? He could choose. Why he chose to come under that condition? Why? Any suggestion, any, any words will come in? Example. Of what? Of, I think to be an example of acceptance of, of everything that is more simple and humble and special for the people that are poor, that are um, marginalized. Very good. So he sat right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Simplicity. And sometimes we forget about it. If you build a little thing, we'll, ah, the pride's going to show the importance. And he was the one who built everything. But he chose to come in that condition. And there is a passage on the uh, book, uh, uh, Our Daily Bread, by Chico Xavier for, from Emmanuel. And the ballad would like to read? 
for us? <laughs> yeah. Splendor to darkness, from eternal dawn to complete night, from the stars to the manger, from the infinite to limitation, from glory to carpentry, from grandeur to self-denial, from the divinity of the angels to the misery of humankind, from the company of sublime spirits to the company of sinners, from the from being governor of the world to being servant of all, from Magnus, Magnus, to slave, from benefactor to persecuted, from savior to one forsaken, from emissary of love to victim of hatred. He humbled himself and dimmed his light so that men and women could rise and shine forever. And I was you now reflecting also on this message. If it, that, it, it must be very important for our growth to connect, to be humble, to, to follow that path. Otherwise, a size of this spirit won't be doing that. Must be very important for us. It will guide us to evolve faster then focus on in the pride that only is going to hold ourselves down. The second passage was in the book uh, Boa Nova, in English it, The Good News, also by uh, Chico Xavier, but the spirit was Humberto de Campos. A little bit about this book, Humberto de Campos, on the spirit realm, did a, you know, a research about Jesus' life. And he selected 30 passages that he and the whole team decided that's most important for us to tell us more in details what happened, many scenarios that Jesus went through it. And those 30 passages must be, again, very important to help us. And one of them that we choose on the paper was the lesson of Nicodemus. And this one, there are two or three, there are many, but there are three that we're going to highlight it on these conversations. So on the beginning of this, uh, when Umberto de Campos was trying to describe he started talking about the situations that uh, um, Nicodemus and Jesus were in. It was in the time that um, Jesus was started to uh, show his teachings. And the Pharisees was going against what Jesus was teaching, his teachings. So part of the, the, the population there really liked what Jesus was saying and connect with him. The other side was going against him. And the majority of them was the Pharisees. But what very interesting because uh, the Pharisees was looking at what Jesus was doing, was helping the people, the poor, transform them and make the Pharisees even harder. How come he can do those things? But he had one Pharisee that has a good heart. That was Nicodemus. So this, the, Nicodemus realized Jesus is the Messiah. Because what he's doing, only the one that could be this such a good connection with God 
that will allow him to do what he's doing. So this night, Nicodemus decided, I want to meet, let me bring in my own words, okay? <laughs> I want to meet with Jesus. I have a question for him that I can figure this out. And that's when I started this conversation. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, notable for his well-formed heart and intelligence. So one night, after great worries and long reasonings, he saw Jesus in particular, seduced by his magnanimity of his actions and the grandeur of his sane doctrine. So now, this conversation. I have employed my existence in interpreting, in interpreting the law, but I would like to receive your words about resource that I should employ to know the kingdom of God. So, it just sometimes like us. Okay, what is that about the kingdom of God? What should I do or what I shouldn't do in order to discover, to feel the kingdom of God? So that's Nicodemus now asking Jesus and Jesus. And I love this part. Humberto de Campos always describe, describes the feeling, the, the face of Jesus educating Nicodemus or educating all of us, the Master is smiling, kindly, and clarifying. First of all, Nicodemus, it's not enough that you have lived the, to interpret the law. Before reasoning about its provision, you should have felt the text. For one, one thing, if you, if you don't remember anything that I had said before, <laughs> take that, okay? Why? Because sometimes we can find out to get to know everything, but we don't feel it. We, we grow a lot here, but not here. I'm talking, I'm listening to. So before we connect to Jesus' teachings, connect with our heart. Because we'll be able to really see the message behind. And he continues, But in truth, I must tell you that no one will know the kingdom of heaven without being born again. So here Jesus said the message of the reincarnation. But Nicodemus didn't understand. How come? How come an a, a old person can, can come back? How they can go back to the womb of the, the, womb of the, of the woman and, 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 and reborn it again? And then Jesus knew that he was not prepared to understand that message. And he mentioned, Nicodemus, if I'm talking about matters related to the earth and you still don't understand. Imagine if we're talking about the matter of the spirit realm. And Nicodemus realized maybe, maybe he's right. So he left. But together in this moment Jesus had two uh, disciples with him. Was James and Andrew. And both of them, you can see, listen to the conversation, and also they couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And they said, hmm. <laughs> well, let's wait until Nicodem leaves, <laughs> and then we're going to have our private conversation with Jesus to find out. And that's what happened. So Nicodemus left. 
And then now uh, the, the two disciples asking him, so tell a little bit more about, you know, reborning again. And then Jesus, why such a generation about this truth? Jesus asked them kindly. Jesus asked them kindly. Always Jesus, the way he teaches, it's in a, with love. He doesn't miss the truth, but always with love. Iron trees reborn after pruning. With respect to man, the process is different, but the spirit of renewal is always the same. The body is a garment, the man is honor. And he continues to explain there, saying, the death of the body is this indispensable change because the soul will always walk through other experience. We need experience. I'm going to continue a little bit and go back here. Until we can provide the indispensable supply of light for the definitive, definitive road in the kingdom of God, with all the perfection achieved along rough path. Some reflection. Roth path. It's important for us to acknowledge we're going to have a rough path. Knowing that when that presents in our life, we don't get desperate. We change our mind and say, okay, how can I overcome? What can I do to learn from that experience? Because we're not, we're going to avoid to waste our energy in fighting. Why? Why? It's more, how can I overcome that difficulty? Experience. Sometimes we try not to go, not to have this experience in life. Those good experiences, we always like to go through it. But sometimes those challenges are one that we're going to be building virtues. That's the one sometimes we want to avoid. But when we avoid that, we're losing our time. It's important to have those experiences. And then it continues. Master, since the body is like the material clothing of the soul, why are we not all equal in the world? I see beauty in young people, but with uh, cripples and paralytics. So it's a legitimate question, right? Well, if you just need to change the body, why we have this so variety of a body that comes in? That's where Jesus started to explain the law of cause and effect. Good cause, good effect. Bad cause, you're going to have some repercussions for that you know, um, uh, decision. I have not taught, said Jesus, that everyone who turns into an instrument of scandal must whip it so cares with itself, the hell or heaven, it has been built in the core of conscience. Would it be fair to grant the more perfect and beauty second garment to the rebellious spirit that spoil the first one? Rebellions, thank you, Gabi. Rebellions. So that's important for us because right now we're building our future. The decision that we are making today, that's what the seeds that we're going to put to collect in the future. And as much as we love ourselves, we wanted the best for ourselves, so let's invest as much as you can to build a better future for us, because it's the law. Right in the beginning, we saw some physics laws, building the planets, and, and Jesus knows about this. And Jesus knows also the moral laws. 
And that's why all this teaching he comes in and living by that is telling us, follow me. You feel happier. Lord, I now understand that's James. Think that I know now I got everything, no worries, I'll take it. Lord, I know I now understand the mechanism of redemption. James murmured, expressing the joy of his understanding. But I know that in this way, the world will always need the climate of scandals and suffering. So long as the debtor, debtor to pay his debt cannot do so without another taking his place with the same debt. Another legitimate, okay, maybe, well, you're always going to have that. You know, you need to have another one. So if you kill someone, so the next life you need to have somebody else to kill him. So that's never going to end. The, the, the evil piece there is never going to end. And then Jesus came back. The master grasped the breath of the objection and clarified the disciples asking, within the law of Moses, how does the process of redemption take place? See, another thing, Jesus, he asked questions. So inside of us, we start to think, to process something inside of us to really, let, let me think it through it. And James did that. He looked at, J James thought for a moment and said, it's also written in the law that the man shall pay an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, right? And even sometimes today, inside ourselves, we, we have the tendency, or well, if someone did this with me, uh, I feel in charge to do the same. Just like we are a little bit of James too. Mm -hmm. You too, James, are doing as Nicodemus. Jesus replies with a general a smile. So now he connects back with uh, Nicodemus because it's the same way that Nicodemus were thinking. In fact, like most men, you have reasoned, but you have not felt it. Perhaps you haven't thought that the first commandment of the law is determination, determination of love. That's the second piece for us. Two things. To feel before we get into the text. The second one. The first commandment, commandment first comes love. And that was also on the time that Moses was teaching. But we, we forget about that one. Let's skip the first one. Let's get to the second one. And then Jesus was continued there. Above the you shall not commit adultery, shall not covet. There is the love God above all things with all your heart, with all your understanding. And then he starts to explain a little bit deeper that peace. But if that comes first, if any action that comes in my mind to do against the other, I'll be doing against God. Right? And then, oh, I'm, I'm not following the first commandment. So I should stop right there. And then Jesus here started to explain a little bit more. All the creatures, creatures uh, have done the same, investigating the revel, uh, revelations, rev, thank you, uh, heaven with their own selfishness. They have organized justice as the highest building of human ideation, idealism. And yet I place love 
above the justice of the wor world and have thought that it alone covers multitudes of sins. That's a very powerful message that we can take with us. If we have done something wrong in the past, for us, don't be caught or don't be hooked on that or thinking, trying to punish ourselves or thinking about, oh, that's going to happen with me in the future. The first law, the law of the love, that can set our side, ourselves free is just do love. As much as we love, as much as we do an action with love, that would take care of their past. So that's a very important message for us. We can build a future, a much better future for us. Paying attention on those messages. And that's also very powerful. And he gave us a very good method how to do it. With the law of love, we realize that the executor and the victim are two brothers, son of one father. It is enough for both of them to fill it so that divine brotherhood would remove the ghosts of, ghosts of scandals and suffering. So what he's saying is, if we have someone that we have a difficulty relationship, that sometimes takes our mind out, you can feel the anxiety or, or it doesn't feel good. And if at this moment, if you also want inside, remember that person, bring it right now in our mind. And now, connect us with God, our Father. Feeling it. Now look at that person as our brother or as our sister. Let this vibration really dissolve so we can little by little disconnect with those anxieties or those bad thoughts. It's okay not agree. That's okay. That's part of it. But we can take it out. Those ties that doesn't bring you joy. We can do it. That comes from Jesus' teachings. And that's the most important message that I want to bring it here. It's possible. It's part of the law. And uh, after, just like we feel now, just before you come with this too, what happened there, James and uh, Andrew got so excited you want to go out as I am right now and spread that information. But Jesus at that time said, no. If, I didn't, if Nicodemus won't be able to understand right now and he had a good knowledge of the law, how the people were going to understand that? We build the house. It's not from the top to the bottom. From the bottom to the top. And he mentioned, I'm going to send the counselor, the spiritism, to teach a little bit more in details. 
because by them you're going to have enough maturity. You're going to have more intelligent to really understand these messages. And that's why we're here right now. Our opportunity to really understand all this message. Feel the text. Feel one another as a brother. But before we get to the next one, just to seal this information, I'd like to invite all of you to stand up and give a hug to someone close to you. As a brother. We're glad to be here. You're part of it. You have to take credit too. Valeu, meu brother. Eu te amo, meu brother. Obrigado pelo seu sua doçura e a sua energia pacificadora que a gente precisa tanto nesse momento. Todos nós. Obrigado. Great job with the vocab, Dad. I said vocab. Pode ir com ela lá, se ela quiser. É aqui, ó, vai no corredor aqui. Eu espero, já tá terminando. Pede para ela pode esperar. Podemos retornar um pouquinho? Can we return a little bit? Don't get carried away. There's so much. Um abraço em você. Saudade. Love you. Love you too. 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 Love you our brother, our hugging, our system. And use this technique any time that we get into a relationship and something happens, so we can mentally process that. Mentally, because little by little we start to melt any other energy that's not based on love. The third one, the Sermon of the Mountain. And uh, we'd like, again, feel the text. Feel, we're going to put a small video here, but I think uh, the whole idea for us, if we will listen direct from Jesus, because the Sermon of the Mountains which I still remember the beautiful lecture that you had at center. That's much more into details, each pass. What does that mean? Today, we're going to go overall. But as Jesus was telling us the way for us to overcome the difficulty. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and burden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it keepeth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And uh, John Evangelist, she mentioned just uh, to close that each verse line represents victory of the goodness or the triumph of the light over darkness. And she asked to reflect, think carefully and see what side of Jesus' sermon you fit in, whether you are on the verse of light and peace, or in the verse of shadow and pain. So for us, if you feel, and it's inside our own conscience, in your heart. So if we fall in the other side, we kindly move back to the side of the goodness. And uh, we have just one more video. There's one, and then we're going to close. But that to stimulate us. Because we're celebrating, you know, the Christmas.
que possamos né, seguir. If we can follow Jesus and spread the love, the kindness in our daily. Thank you very much for the kindness of your look. And um, I'm very happy to be here with all of you today. Thank you so much. Thank you.